First of all, Rachel Evans, queer person, queer rights spokesperson, sorry. Thanks Ian Rose and thanks to Bradley Manning and WikiLeaks Defence Committee who have organised this action today. My name is Rachel Evans, I'm an activist in Socialist Alliance and a lesbian acting in the marriage rights campaign. First I'd like to acknowledge that we are on Aboriginal land. It always was and always will be Aboriginal land. This land was never ceded. I give thanks to elders past and present and heroic resistance fighters past and present like Pumoe and current leaders Ray Jackson, the Etox, Gary Foley. Well, we are just one, uh, one group amongst many campaigning today to free Bradley Manning. There are 14 countries taking action today to say very loudly that what is happening to Bradley Manning in this pre-trial on all April the 24th at Fort Meade in the USA where he's going to court is a kangaroo court and no justice will be done. 24 year old Bradley Manning is a hero to us and he should be a hero to you who are walking past. But he frightens the United States government, the most powerful nation in the world, with its war drones, its nuclear arsenal, its military bases, its air forces and all its occupying forces. The US has decided Bradley Manning is a threat. Bradley Manning was a soldier in the US Army, stationed in Iraq from October 2010 onwards. He dealt with data that showed the US and their allies are war criminals, murderers, and that they are robbing the resources of the global south. Manning is alleged to be the source of the biggest leak of US war secrets in history. It is alleged he leaked this evidence to WikiLeaks. He faces potential life sentence in the United States. He served in the US Army when you could not be openly gay. Manning defined this homophobic policy showing the same moral determination that would later assist the people of the Middle East dying under US war and occupation. Manning flaunted Obama's homophobia by keeping a fairy wand prominently stationed on his desk. The homophobia of the US was just one issue that Manning rebelled against. And it's one we reason why we salute Manning. He is a hero to all standing up against homophobia, a prejudice that caused high, causes high rates of suicide amongst queer youth and should be relegated to the dustbin of history. Manning is a role model for young people standing up against bigotry. Recently, Obama removed the don't ask, don't tell policy from the US Army, the largest employer in the United States finally allowing working class queers who join the army to get a chance at an education to be out of the closet. But he did not change, Obama did not change the nature of that army, which is to bring horror, war and terror to Afghanistan and Iraq so the United States can cement its economic and strategic dominance in the region. Manning is also genderqueer. From the emails between him and the man who sold him out to the FBI, Adrian Lamo, it is evident that Manning was trying to work out if he wanted to be a woman. Manning was stationed in eastern Baghdad where, where he was asked to cover up the data that showed the US brutalising, torturing and maiming innocent people over the global south. He was asked to be part of that cover up. The cover-up which the corporate media assist with willingly. Accessing these files 14 hours a day, he questioned the US Army and what it was doing and then he made a decision to be part of the truth brigades, to be part of those seeking justice and dignity for the people in the global south. But that Manning was gay and that Manning was, Manning was potentially transitioning to become a woman is important because Bradley Manning knew what it was like to be bullied, to be ridiculed, to be denied dignity, to give empathy to the Iraqi people who were also being denied dignity would not have been hard. And the US and the allies, including Australia, have denied dignity to Iraq and Afghanistan for decades. The Iraqi occupation has killed more than a million people over the last 
15, 20 years of occupation, countless women, children and men have been murdered. Not to bring democracy, as the United States said. Not to bring women's rights, as the United States said. Not to bring freedom, but for control of resources. This was best articulated by an Iraqi high school student who I saw speak at an anti-war rally in 1991. She said, if my people's blood was made of oil, you would not have come to kill us. So in an email transcript between him and Adrian Lamo, Manning said he had access to 260,000 State Department cables from embassy and consulates all over the world, explaining how First World exploits the third in detail from an internal perspective. In another communication, he said he was taking action because it might actually change something. Well, we're here to say yes, it has changed something and we are here to defend you, Bradley Manning and WikiLeaks because you are vital in changing the dynamics that have killed so many people in the Middle East. The world will never be the same thanks to WikiLeaks and think, thanks to the information that it has spread across the world. For WikiLeaks gave courage to Tunisia and Egypt and assisted the Arab Spring. The Vulturic US Empire can never again argue that to bring democracy to the Middle East, they have to come in and occupy. The masses of that region know how to run their own. They know how to fight their own battles, their own dictators, and they are winning. In the last two days, Egypt has shown again the power of the people. So WikiLeaks has been key to providing the anti-war movements with arguments we need. And we need to continue to build such movements that challenge the US and Australian occupations of Iraq and Afghanistan. The Australian government says they will leave Afghanistan. This is a victory for the movement and mass opposition to this occupation. But they also have said that they will leave special forces in that country. But we say very much no. Take all your troops out. Leave Afghanistan pay war reparations and rebuild what you have destroyed. And leave properly Iraq. The US withdrawal from Iraq has left thousands of private US paid mercenaries in the country, securing a puppet government and the country's oil. So we continue to build the anti-war movements and we ask that you come and join us. We need to defend Manning, defend Assange and defend WikiLeaks. And to do that, we need to battle our own government here. The Gillard government who have also occupied Iraq and Afghanistan in the last 20 years and who have covered up our own soldiers' war crimes. Who have sacrificed the lives of Australians, of young people, to secure the profits of the 1%, the oil profits, the gas profits, the profits of the drug trade. So we demand of the Gillard government that they support Julian Assange and Bradley Manning instead of lying about them as, the re as recently Attorney General Nicola Roxon has done. So we say to the United States and the Australian government, free Bradley Manning. We say to the British government, free Julian Assange. And there's a chant that's, that's going around the countries at the moment. And it is, when democracy is under attack, Stand strong, fight back. When democracy is under attack, stand strong, fight back. When democracy is under attack, stand strong, fight back. Nelson Mandela is considered a terrorist by many governments all around the world. What for? For standing up for human rights against the uh, President of apartheid regime in South Africa at the time. It wasn't that long ago that uh, Daniel Ellsberg was considered the most dangerous man in America. And people like... Uh, Dr. Martin Luther King paid with their life for doing the same, breaking the law. It's these kinds of heroes <coughs> that uh, break the law that set the tone for the next generation's free society. It's about time we recognise Bradley Manning now before his life is wasted in jail. The way that happened to uh, Nelson Mandela. So, we all need to do something about it and the quickest way to do it is to go to bradleymanning.org. There, you'll find lots of information and actions to do. Because the more we know about it, the more we share. The more people know about Bradley Manning, the more they'll realise that this is a gross injustice. And the more likely he is to be set free within years rather than within decades. And so, if everybody could pull their finger out and share it about, that's the way to do it. Hi everyone, I'm Linda from the Support Assange and WikiLeaks Coalition. 
Thank you to everybody who's come out here today. It's great to see such a big crowd supporting Bradley Manning. Um, Bradley Manning, as you know, is the whistleblower who allegedly leaked um, thousands of classified cables, uh, the Iraq war logs and the Afghan war diaries to WikiLeaks. The founder of WikiLeaks, Julian Assange, is now being targeted by the US government, who are obviously intent on punishing him, like they have punished Bradley Manning, for doing no more than giving us the truth about what our governments, who are supposed to represent us, um, are doing in our name. Um, Julian Assange has now been under house arrest for over 500 days in the United Kingdom. This is a situation which our own Attorney General called extraordinary. Has she done anything about it? No. Has our Prime Minister done anything about it? No. no. Has Bob Carr, our new Foreign Minister, done anything about it? No. Julian Assange has been left languishing in the United Kingdom um, and any day now we'll hear the result of his final appeal against extradition to Sweden. If extradited to Sweden, he could be sent to the United States um, straight on from Sweden um, with no, no judicial process um, it would happen in secret and it could happen immediately in the United States he faces a uh, prosecution for um, charges probably relating to espionage um, it's well known that, you, that you, the United States government is putting pressure on Bradley Manning to try and implicate Julian Assange in these charges this would represent an unprecedented attack on free speech and the freedom of the press. And our government is just standing by and letting this happen. So I think it's really important that all Australians know what's going on. We need to get the facts about this case and we need to understand that this has serious implications, not just for one individual, not just for Julian Assange, but for all of us. Because if the United States gov government can extradite him in the full glare of publicity with our government just letting this happen, then we're all in serious, serious trouble. This is an Australian who's just going about his lawful business. Um, Nicola Roxon appeared on the Q&A program last week. You might have seen her. On that program, she repeated uh, what Christine Assange has pointed out to be 18 lies. She said that our government is doing everything they can to help Julian Assange. This is not true. Cables released last year, which were published by the Sydney Morning Herald, showed that our government has raised no objections to the possibility of Assange being extradited to the United States. They just asked to be forewarned of the United States government's plans to do this. So basically, they just want time to prepare their PR prepare their damage limitation, but they're not actually going to do anything to stop it. She also repeated the lie that Julian Assange fled Sweden. He did not flee Sweden. He stayed there for five weeks, purely so he could answer the allegations that had been made against him. In the end, he sought permission to leave and he was given permission to leave. I'll take it back if you like. During the last year or so that he's been under house arrest in the UK, He's offered repeatedly to be questioned there. All these requests have been knocked back by the Swedish authorities. So we can only conclude that um, this case is about getting Assange to Sweden where he can be more easily extradited to the United States. Um, the Swedish, uh, Sweden has a really troubling record of complying with similar requests. They've um, agreed to every extradition request from the United States government since 2000. They were condemned by the UN for their part in CIA rendition as well. So we all have grave fears for Julian Assange's safety. Um, so yeah, I think it's just really important that anybody uh, passing by takes a leaflet and looks, at, looks into this case more closely, looks at the facts of the case because it's got such serious implications for, for free speech for, and for our democracy.
documents to WikiLeaks where he was stationed in eastern Baghdad in 2000, from 2009 onwards. We're here today because one of the things he was alleged to have leaked was collateral murder, a document which showed the brutality of the United States in Iraq. They killed two Reuters journalists, they killed children, they massacred people in this docu document and it got spread as it should have gotten spread across the world across the world because we need to know what the US is doing in Iraq and Afghanistan and Bradley Manning and WikiLeaks allegedly Bradley Manning but certainly WikiLeaks has shown us definitely shown us what the US is capable of how many people they've murdered that they're capable of murdering and so we're standing up today to say very loudly free Bradley Manning Free Julian Assange, we need to defend WikiLeaks, we need to be defending the truth tellers, and they are definitely truth tellers. So take a leaflet and get involved in the campaign. Bravest whistleblowers that the planet, I think, has ever seen. And he needs people around the globe to stand up for him because his own government is not standing up for him. In fact, his own government is putting him in uh, imprisonment in circumstances that the UN Special Rapporteur um, for human rights has described as nothing other than torture. Bradley Manning, for those walking past who haven't heard, is a young private, a young man from the United States Army who was given access to literally millions of secret documents about how the United States military operated. And one of those documents was the now infamous collateral damage footage that showed the cruel and inhuman face, the real face of America's war in Iraq, which we were a part of here in Australia. It showed the callous indifference of a military, uh, of, of, of the US military to the lives of ordinary Iraqis. And it showed the same in terms of the material released uh, regarding the United States and Australia's war in Afghanistan. Bradley Manning, for doing nothing other than giving the world the truth about the way the United States military operates has now effectively uh, been held incommunicado for, for substantially over one year. His own lawyers have asked for the evidence that the United States military says it has against him and in large part they've been refused the evidence that is used by the United States military to continue to prosecute him for being a whistleblower. because. What Bradley Manning did, uh, allegedly, through the uh, use of the WikiLeaks website, was allow the rest of the world to know what only the United States government thought it could hide. And what we have seen now with the work of Bradley Manning is hopefully the start of a new openness on our globe. Hopefully the start of a new way in which ordinary citizens can understand the way our governments operate and can hold our governments to account for the crimes when they commit them in our name, including in overseas countries. We need the globe to stand up for Bradley Manning because what Bradley Manning has done in an act of singular courage is stand up for the rest of us as ordinary citizens. Let us know the workings of our governments and we deserve, we owe it to him and he deserves us standing together around the globe and speaking up for him. Thank you for coming tonight. It's great to see the numbers here and it's great to, that we continue to get the message out that the United States, Australia, the rest of the world needs to free Bradley Manning. Thank you very much.